This podcast is an invitation to feel and experience the souls of famous old Hollywood homes and to have an in-depth journey to the areas where they're located through interviews with longtime residents. Either you're a fan of old Hollywood in Los Angeles planning to have a vacation or an even bigger step, considering a certain area for your future home. This is your opportunity to receive valuable information and insightful advice you won't find anywhere else. Hello, hello, and welcome to my podcast. Are you in the mood for California? Today, we'll explore and feel Sunland Tahanga, followed by an interview with wonderful Lila Bassier. And you definitely, when you come out here, you don't feel like you're in LA. In fact, our landlord shared with us that um, movie productions oftentimes will come up here and like rent, you know, the space. Like she has her, the, our home has actually been in some movies. And then this, like our street has been in um, some movies when they want it to look like not, not LA. Mm-hmm. When they want it to look like, you know, somewhere kind of in the sticks of, of you know, like out, just a place that's removed and doesn't look like a city. So productions actually use this area for that when they're trying to create that vibe. Masha Korpacheva is a California-based realtor and a member of the National Association of Realtors in Los Angeles. She's an advocate for selling and buying homes with soul and practicing mindfulness in real estate. With master's degrees in spiritual psychology and linguistics, Masha brings all of her skills to work with her clients. An intuit and empath, she has touched many lives with her outstanding ability to see beyond the visible and helping to come to better understanding of issues and their resolutions. An adventurous world traveler, from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania to exploring the Galapagos Islands, Masha has a particular passion for the City of Angels. Having landed in this paradise and adopted it as her home, she's been sharing old Hollywood stories since 2007. In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood. And now, are you ready to experience Sunland Tahanga? In the picturesque embrace of the San Fernando Valley and the Verdugo Mountains, the neighborhoods of Sunland and Tahanga emerged as distinct entities, each with its own personality. Separated by the meandering Mount Gleason Avenue, they stood side by side, yet worlds apart. Little did they know that their stories were destined to intertwine in a narrative of growth, change, and unity. The year was 1928, a time when these two communities decided to join hands, sharing resources, dreams, and destinies. The hyphenated name Sunland Tahanga became their badge of camaraderie, marking a new beginning for both. High above them all was Mount Lukens, the crown jewel, towering as the highest point in the entire city, keeping a watchful eye over the unfolding drama. Before the historic merger, the streets of Tahanga were nothing more than dusty paths, but by 1927, the winds of change began to sweep through the neighborhood. Foothill Boulevard, once known as Michigan Avenue, took center stage, and as the streets received new names, the character of the community remained steadfast. Fast forward to the 1960s, and the Sunland Tahunger Chamber of Commerce became the guardians of the neighborhood's unique ambience. They were the heroes who took a violent stand against the proposed freeway that threatened to mar their cherished rural landscape. Theirs was a battle for the very soul of their community. After years of debates and delays, the final stretch of the freeway was dedicated in 1981 with State Transportation Director 
Adriana Gianturco leading the way. Even though the freeway skirted the heart of the community, it stood as a testament to the indomitable spirit of Sunland Tahanga's residents. Today, life in the neighborhood revolves around Foothill Boulevard, where most businesses find their home. Tahanga Canyon Boulevard, Sunland Boulevard, and Wentworth Street are the community's arteries, connecting it to the bustling city of Los Angeles while preserving its unique charm. But before the Sunland Tahanga merger, these lands were the sacred home of the Tongwa people, and Tahanga's name is believed to have meant old woman's place in their ancient language, a tribute to Mother Earth. Sunland, born in 1885 as Monte Vista, blossomed on 2200 acres of the Tehunga Park tract. Initially, it hosted a sprawling 40-acre olive orchard, becoming the largest in Los Angeles County. In 1906, it had shed its old name, adopting Sunland. This elevated town, standing 1,500 feet above sea level, presented a challenge to reach in 1908. An arduous journey from Los Angeles took an entire day. Yet, the beauty concealed in its embrace was worth the effort, with mighty oak trees and a central park that drew crowds during hot summer days. Rolling hills were adorned with vineyards, and the town's sole industry specialized in packing local olives. Monte Vista Park, a beloved spot for picnics, nestled in the town center. Meanwhile in Tahanga, in 1907, visionary thinkers William Ellsworth Smythe and Marshall V. Hartranft teamed up to create a utopian dream. Their motto was a little land and a lot of living, and they divided the community into one and a half acre lots, lovingly dubbed Little Lands. A community hub known as Bolton Hall, crafted from local river rock, became the heart of this unique endeavor, still standing as a historical monument. Their spirited call Move to Tahanga with a trouble and a bag of cement and build your own. In the post-World War I era, people seeking freedom from high rents flocked to Tahanga. They constructed homes, often with bolder foundations, following the Indian Pueblo idea or a rustic hills style. By 1927, Tahanga boasted a population of about 4,000, outpacing Sunland with 2,000 people. Tahanga's most distinguished resident was John Stephen McGroarty, a multi-talented figure who resided in his self-built masterpiece, Rancho Chupa Rosa. This historic gem is now known as the McGroarty Arts Center, a cultural monument of Los Angeles. Tahanga's unique elevation of 1,500 feet and geographic isolation shielded it from air pollution plaguing other parts of Los Angeles, making it an attractive haven for those with asthma. By 1929, the Tahanga City Council established zones for sanitariums and facilities for tubercular patients. In the heart of Tahanga, the Tuna Canyon Detention Station took on a different role during World War II. It became a temporary holding facility for Japanese Americans, Italian Americans, German Americans, and Japanese Peruvians, a chapter in history that highlights the complexities of wartime. The gravel pit dispute of the 1950s and 1960s 
was a testament to the community's fierce commitment to preserving its unique ambience. Residents stood their ground, defending their neighborhood's reputation as a sanctuary for those seeking respite from the city's relentless pace. In 1986, a new chapter began as the boundaries of the Los Angeles City Council were redrawn. Sunland Tahanga found itself nestled within a reshaped Second Council District. It was a rural oasis in the heart of the metropolis, a place that celebrated its distinctive way of life. And so, the story of Sunland Tahanga continues to evolve, a captivating blend of history, community spirit, and enduring character in the grand narrative of the City of Angels. And here we are, Welcome to Sunland. I'm so excited to have wonderful Lila Bessier here with me. Lila Bessier is an LA-based sound bath facilitator and 500-hour certified yoga teacher with over 11 years of teaching experience. Lila loves creating mindful, relaxing, and restorative experiences for people by helping them celebrate all kinds of events or by using thoughtful instruction to help them navigate their bodies, minds, and the world we are living in. In addition to providing sound baths and yoga for the greater LA area, Lila is also an established voice actor, a passionate nature lover, and world traveler as well as loving cat, dog, and plant mom. Lila lives in Sunland and loves being surrounded by Latuna Canyon, the trees, and her little garden. You can connect with Lila via Instagram at Lila Bassior or her website www.lilabassiorwellness.com. Lila will share with us what it feels like to live in Sunland. Hello, Lila. Hello. Hi. Happy to be here. <laughs> yes, I, I was really looking forward to our conversation today about Sunland. Me too. I am so honored that you um, asked me to be here and chat with you today. It's really, uh, it feels good. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. So Sunland seems like a very unique place for an artist like you. So what would you say initially drew you to this area of Los Angeles? And has your perception stayed the same since you moved or has it changed since then? And how would you describe the vibe of Sunland? What, what does it actually feel like living there? Yeah, so my boyfriend and I actually moved here. We're we're sort of like on the border of Sunland, Sun Valley, and Latuna Canyon. We're kind of like where all three of those neighborhoods kind of meet. Mm -hmm. And so we're up in horse country. So when we actually moved here at the very end of 2020, and what we were really, really looking for was a, a home, like an actual house, as opposed to like an apartment or a condo, um, and a place that had some space, some outdoor space, of course, because of the pandemic, we wanted to have, you know, space outdoors. And we were drawn to this place because it's an old, funky, you know, 1934 like craftsman farmhouse. Our landlord owns horses, and we were just really drawn to the nature and the animals and being a little bit removed from the city. I was living in North Hollywood. My boyfriend was living in Koreatown. And those are just more urban, you know, there's like more busyness, you know, in those areas. And we were just looking for something a little bit quieter. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so we moved out here and we we're like, oh, this is amazing. It's an oasis. And, you know, Sun Valley and Sunland and Latuni Canyon, this area is very much people here, I really think value nature and mm -hmm. value animals. Um, there are tons of horse properties up here, this area, and then Shadow Hills also, which are all kind of 
they're all kind of meshed together. And they're all, like I said, horse properties, beautiful, big lots with lots of space, lots of trees. And I grew up in Northern California on an acre of land with fruit trees and stuff. And I was really missing that feeling of having outdoor space. So it was really a a perfect situation for us to walk into, especially given the pandemic and you know, knowing that we were going to be spending a lot of time at home and that we were going to be spending a lot of time in our yard. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah. Wow. You know what? It seems like this area is one of the few areas left in uh, California or in the Lake County that still feels like old Hollywood because, you know, old California used to be all ranchos, right? with horses and uh, lots of land. And now, you know, it feels more like a city in most of the areas, but where you live right now, you're experiencing the California, the way it was uh, in the 19th century. And you definitely, when you come out here, you don't feel like you're in LA. In fact, our landlord shared with us that um, movie productions oftentimes will come up here and like rent, you know, the space. Like she has her, the, our home has actually been in some movies. And then this, like our street has been in um, some movies when they want it to look like not, not LA. Mm-hmm. When they want it to look like, you know, somewhere kind of in the sticks of, of you know, like out just a place that's removed and doesn't look like a city. So productions actually use this area for that when they're trying to create that vibe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very, it feels very much like what California used to be like. It feels like Northern California in some, some regards. And it's just a really like rural life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing when you live out here, specifically where we live, you know, we live on a horse ranch. So like, if you're wanting like brand new sparkling countertops and, you know, perfectly manicured yard and like brand new carpets, like that's, that's not the vibe here. You know, like we live on a horse ranch, so it's dry, it's dusty. There are flies. (laughs) (laughs) But it's like part of, it's like being on a dude ranch, you know, it's like part of being in nature. Yes. Particularly amazing situation for me because I am, you know, a sound bath facilitator, a yoga teacher and a voiceover actor. So it was kind of like this, it was kind of crazy, honestly, because when we we came to look at the place, our landlord was like, oh, you're a voiceover actress and and my boyfriend is DJ. She was like, that's amazing. You're going to love this. Mm -hmm. My ex-husband built a studio, like converted the garage into a studio. So there was a fully sound treated, like recording studio in the backyard of this property, Mm -hmm. which wasn't advertised. There were no pictures of it. Like God bless our landlord. She did not, you know, put that on the thing. So we were like, uh, that's amazing. And then as we were talking to her more, I told her that I taught yoga and I did sound baths and she was like, Oh my God, that's amazing. I love yoga. I love sound baths. You know, I have this giant horse arena And if you are wanting to um, do sound baths there, like you can use that space, which was such a blessing because, you know, you know, December of 2020, January of 2021, there were no yoga studios open. There were no gyms open. There was no indoor spaces open. It was was still very closed. And so to have this huge outdoor space where I could facilitate sound baths and offer healing to people who needed it so badly, but wanted to do it from a safe distance, Mm -hmm. it was such a blessing. Like I... I think about that all the time about how really like having this space is what allowed me to like really grow my sound baths over 2020 and 2021. Like, because otherwise I wouldn't have, I mean, we would, nobody was able to really do things unless they had an outdoor space during that time. So it was like really, really amazing that we were able to get into this spot. And our landlord loves animals. She is a huge animal lover. And we are definitely foster fails. We have six cats and a dog. And it is really (laughs) hard to find a landlord who's cool with that many animals. So we are really, really grateful for her. And she was like, yeah, bring them. (laughs) Bring them over. Oh my God. This is, wow. This is a treasure to find. Oh my God. Truly. Yeah, truly. And I mean, okay, let's also be honest. It comes with it. You know, it comes with its annoyances. It's an older house. Things break. Things are a little funky, a little wonky, you know, because it's a house that was built in 1934. And, um, you know, so things go wrong. 
Yes. But overall, it really has been been a blessing for us in so many ways. I can totally see that. And also, even though the house is old, but you have just different priorities, you know, and people choose where they want to live based on what they're actually looking for, for themselves, for their lifestyle. And the fact that you were able to do sound baths and teach yoga at the time when the yoga studios were closed and actually doing it in nature in sort of very pure and serene atmosphere. I mean, what can be better than this? Yeah, it was really, I mean, really, I couldn't have asked for anything more. And, and exactly, I mean, our priorities are just, you know, everyone, like you said, has a different set of priorities of what they need to feel good in a home. And, you know, I've always lived in spaces that had nice backyard spaces, like, even when I was in, um, you know, college and and in those years, I always, it was really important to me for there to be outdoor space in the places that I lived. And, you know, even North Hollywood, I had an apartment that had a backyard space and I grew a garden and stuff. So moving out here, it was just, there was so much potential for entertaining and there was potential for gardening. And so, yeah, our priorities were definitely leaning in that direction. And so, of course, you know, some of the other things go a little bit by the wayside. But again, you make your choices and you choose according to what it's going to serve you best. And so, yeah, for sure. It was really a blessing for sure during that time. Wow, wonderful. What a great experience. And I'm sure it has contributed to both personal and professional growth. It sounds like it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Very, very cool. Okay, now tell us a little bit more about uh, Sunlab. Maybe you have discovered um, some hidden gems or lesser known attractions in this area that maybe you would want more people to know about. And maybe you have some favorite local spots in Sunland, for example, parks or cafes or some recreational areas where you like to spend yeah, your free time. For sure. So what and what immediately comes to mind is um, the Theodore Payne Foundation, mm-hmm. which is quite literally a five minute walk from my house, which is such an amazing place. So the Theodore Payne Foundation is a nursery for local native plants. Mm-hmm. So they grow and sell plants that are beneficial for the LA environment. So when, you know, when you go to plant your garden, if you're planting plants that aren't native to desert kind of California, Mm -hmm. it's really hard for them to maintain. They usually take a lot of water. And also it's difficult for the local insects to really benefit from them. Mm -hmm. So um, the Theater Pain Foundation does tons of classes and education about how to plant a sustainable garden, how to plant a garden that's going to serve and benefit the ecological growth of Mm -hmm. your area, how to provide, like, for example, there's certain types of milkweed that certain butterflies need in order to, you know, do their thing. There's certain types of ground cover that are a more sustainable option than grass, but that are still really beautiful and really soft and like nice to walk on. So it's, this place is so amazing. They have like an education center, then they have all of their like garden where they're selling plants. And then they also have this amazing hiking trail. That's like, it's not a long hike, but it's this really beautiful, I would say maybe 10 minute, maybe 15 minute hike. And you get all the way up to the top of this peak and it looks out over the the beautiful Latuna Canyon kind of area. Mm -hmm. And it's so nice. I I go there often um, when I want to like take a little kind of mini hike where it's not going to be hours and hours of my time. But you know, if I have, if I have a half hour, 45 minutes, I'll walk over there and I'll say hi to the staff and I'll go walk up the, the walking trail and sit and meditate for a little bit at the top and then come back down. And it's just so nice. They are also the kindest people. So that is like, was such a joy to realize that that was literally, you know, a five minute walk down the street from my house. Yes, yes. You probably spent most of your time there. <laughs> it was, I mean, I I led a day retreat actually here at my home. And part of the day retreat, we did a walking meditation to the Theater Pain Foundation. And it was so cool to show people the space and to be able to introduce them to the the foundation. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's such a blessing that it's here. Also minutes away from my home, there are just so many hiking trails in our area. There's the Latuna Canyon Trail, which is a hugely popular hiking trail, you know, 
there's, if you go a little bit further, like I said, I'm kind of a little bit south. Technically, I'm a little south of Sunland. So if you go up Sunland Boulevard, more into Sunland proper, there's some amazing hiking up in there. Um, there's Trail Canyon Falls. There's just, I mean, there's just so much. It's really an area where if you love nature, you can easily get to it. Mm-hmm. And and I love that. I, I loved that because I had gone before I lived here, I'd gone hiking up in this area. So I kind of knew it a little bit mm-hmm. before that. And yeah, I mean, and the other thing that I love about it is it is a quick jaunt to North Hollywood. So for me, like I lived in North Hollywood for five years. So like all of my favorite restaurants and cafes and stuff are in North Hollywood. So for me, like I have to admit, because we moved here during the pandemic and because we've lived here the majority of the time we've lived here has been like pandemic y times. We haven't explored the restaurant scene as much as we probably should have because first of all, we we really try to cook the majority of our meals at home because it's healthier and yes. <laughs> um, and <laughs> less expensive and all the things. However, you know, it is so close to North Hollywood that usually if we're going to go get a bite to eat, we just pop down over to, cause again, it's where I lived there for so long. It's like where all of my favorite places are. Also my sister lives in North Hollywood. So there's a big draw that for that. Reason yes. too. Um, you know, there's like, a, I mean, there's a handful of, um, you know, restaurants and cafes. I will say in my specific area, right where I am, like on the border of Sun Valley, Lajuni Canyon, and like a little south of, it's not a huge restaurant scene. Like Mm -hmm. you would not move here because you want to be walking distance from all the cute restaurants and cafes. That's not why you would move here. Right. There are restaurants, there are cafes, but like they're a little bit more basic. Like there's a Starbucks, a Stone's throw away from my house. You know what I mean? There's a Daniel's Tacos, which is fine. You know, they're fine, but they're like kind of the chains. They're not like cute little, you know, locally owned places. Yes. That's not why you would move here. You would move here because you love nature and animals and, you know, the Theodore Payne Foundation and hiking and and then you'd like probably go somewhere else for your food. <laughs> it also, I will say part of that too, I'm a I'm vegan. My boyfriend and I are vegan. So um if you eat meat, there are a lot more options in this area. This area is a little bit less of that LA vibe, you know, like, cause it is a little bit more it's like wild west rustic. vibe. <laughs> it's a little bit more wild west. So like, you know, if you eat meat and you're like down to go get like, uh, you know, a, um, uh, breakfast with the, the, like eggs and bacon and potatoes, you know what I mean? There's definitely that around here for sure. And if you eat meat, there are a lot of really amazing looking, authentic Mexican restaurants. It's just that because we're vegan, we're kind of limited in that way. So there definitely are things around here. We just, you know, haven't gotten to explore them as much because of the pandemic and because of our dietary restrictions. <laughs> right, right. It <laughs> totally makes there. sense. Yeah. And also the way you described Sunland that, you know, it's a place for you know, people who love nature, you know, who love hiking, who love animals. And uh, this is the focus of this area. You know, it's not for like being like um, walking distance from restaurants and stuff. So, but at the same time, it is very central. It's actually a very quick drive to Pasadena if you take 210. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's very close to North Hollywood. It's very close to Burbank. It's, you know, pretty central to so many different areas where you could drive and go to the restaurant. Totally. It's so we live right very close to the five freeway. And so and to the 210. So like we're right in the like little crook between where the like five and 210 sort of like almost intersect. I don't know if they actually intersect, but like you can get to the 210 in five minutes, you can get to the five in five minutes. And so both of those freeways will take you directly to all the things you want. Um, Burbank is a stone's throw away. North Hollywood is a stone's throw away. And Pasadena too, and like Glendale, you know, I mean, all of it there and all of those places have all of that stuff. So, and also it's so close to like Montrose, which is Mm -hmm. so cute. Oh, you know, we we go to, oh, it's so cute. We go to Montrose to go to like the farmer's market sometimes and to go get a bite to eat up there. 
And also, oh my gosh, Descanso Gardens, which is like not technically in Sun Valley, but it is so close. Like I'm a member of Descanso Gardens and it is such a beautiful botanical garden. Oh, it's the best. It's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. And from my house, it's like, yeah, it's like a 10 minute drive to get to Descanso. So, you know, that's really what I feel like is another benefit of, of this area is that you are removed from metropolis Mm -hmm. but you are so close to metropolis that you can have it if you want it but you can choose when to have it Mm -hmm. and you can choose when to like go pet a horse you know right (laughs) yes it's very healthy it sounds very very healthy Mm -hmm. (laughs) definitely my next question to you is actually about your professional journey because you're such a multi-talented artist and you know you're a voiceover actress and you also embrace uh, roles as a yoga teacher, a sound bath facilitator, singer and dancer. How did you actually discover and nurture these passions and how do you manage your time and energy to pursue each passion effectively? Oh boy, that is <laughs> you know, I'm still working on figuring that part out. I have been a performer since I was a kid. My dad was a musician. He was a singer, an amazing guitarist, and a radio personality. So I grew up in a very musical household. I grew up in a household where the arts were very like encouraged and really like appreciated and valued. Um, and also, both my mom and dad were both very spiritual. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like traditional, like, you know, Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, it was very much more in the Eastern practices, not necessarily any, like not necessarily Buddhist or Hindu or any, but like just in general, Eastern philosophy. So I kind of had both acting and like yoga slash, you know, alternative medicine, alternative um, viewpoints from a very young age. So I, I had both really like ingrained in me. Also, I grew up in a really small hippie town in Northern California. Mm-hmm. So that added to the the hippiness of it all. You know, I, I did, I was a performer all, you know, I was a little ham all through, <laughs> um, you know, childhood and middle school and high school. I started in all the, you know, the plays in my high school. I came down to Cal State Fullerton to pursue mm-hmm. musical theater. And so, you know, I came down to LA to pursue acting. And, you know, I graduated from Cal State Fullerton. And then I started studying voiceover. And that felt really great, because it was following in the footsteps of my dad. And, you know, I'd, I'd been a singer my whole life. And so it was like a very natural progression to kind of go into that world, still doing plays and still doing film and TV a little bit, but like really focusing on voiceover. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, like in college, we had had yoga mixed into our acting program, which Ooh. was really cool. It was like in the voice and movement part of it. Um, and also I was a dancer. Very interesting. Yeah, I grew up a dancer too and, and also dancing in college. So all those worlds kind of like connected. And then, you know, I, I have to attribute my the real beginning of my like true yoga journey to my teacher, Gina, she was a teacher, God bless her. She was just teaching at a 24 hour fitness in Buena Park. Um, And but she was such an amazing teacher. And so every day after class, I'd go and ask her all these questions. And at a certain point, she said, Lila, you know, I love your questions, and I will answer all of them, you know, forever. I think your questions are going to get a little bit more sophisticated than what I can really answer. I think you should do a teacher training. And I was like, maybe a yoga teacher. I, I would never. Or not, I would never, but like, I just had never thought of that before. Mm -hmm. So I started looking into the yoga works. She was trained through yoga works. And I was like, I want to learn to teach like you teach. So I started looking into the yoga works teacher training program. And, you know, after some time, it all aligned. I got a scholarship to do the training program. I did the training program. And the week after I graduated, I was so fortunate. I got a teaching job. And ever since then... I have been teaching and I'm so grateful because I've never struggled to find a teaching job in LA. And um, I feel so blessed to be able to say that. So that's kind of like where my yoga journey started. And that was 10 years ago. I got my, um, I just had my 10 year anniversary in March. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. And sound healing actually started kind of around the same time during my 200 hour yoga teacher training. 
I accidentally stumbled into a sound bath. I thought it was a different, I thought it was a restorative yoga class. And I came in and everybody was like laying down and wearing pajamas. And I was <laughs> very confused. And they were like, oh, tonight's a sound bath. I was like, what's a sound bath? They're like, Shh, it's fine. Just lie down. I was like, okay. And so I did. And I was transported. I was, I just felt like I left my body and I woke up, you know, an hour later, which felt like five minutes. And I was like, whoa. I don't know what just happened, but I need to learn more about it. And so I started going to sound baths regularly. I was going as often as I could. I really felt it healing me. And then in 2014, I moved up to LA, moved to Glendale. And I was like, oh, I got to find my sound bath community up here in LA. So I started searching out sound baths and I found Anna Netanel, who is an amazing sound bath facilitator. And so I started going to her sound bath. And then eventually I did her training mm-hmm. and that's kind of like how it all happened. Um, ironically, it was in January of 2020. <laughs> right. And so I was like, this is going to be great. And then we all know how that turned out. So so that's why moving here and really 2020 being what it was actually gave me a really amazing opportunity to practice. So it's like I did my training and then nobody could do anything. But, you know, me and my like small group of people, my three or four people that I was seeing would do sound baths outside. So I was getting a lot of practice mm-hmm. on how to facilitate sound baths outside of my friends. And so that's why moving here to, um, you know, to this area in December of 2020 was such a blessing because then it was like, oh my God, now I've had all this practice and now I have this amazing space to actually facilitate sound baths out here. Yes. And so then that's how it started, you know, just doing them outside. And then in um, 2021, the studio started opening up, Center for Yoga started, opened up, which I was so thrilled. They invited me to come teach there. I'd been teaching there before the pandemic, but at Yoga Works, but then through the pandemic, Yoga Works closed and then it reopened as Center for Yoga, which is a community owned, completely like organic company. So mm-hmm. it's like, it is owned by the students, you know, it's amazing. So I started doing sound baths there and then it just exploded from there. And I'm so grateful. I I mean, really my yoga and sound bath world has always been just so full and so vibrant. And, you know, in terms of managing it all, I mean, today I woke up at 7 a.m. to do an audition that was due at 8 a.m. And then I, from 8 to like 9.30, wrote some posts for Instagram about my sound bath coming up at Center for Yoga and my sound bath training coming up at Center for Yoga. (laughs) Then I took my dog for a walk and now I'm talking to you. So, you know, and then I'm teaching three classes today. So it's, uh, you know, time management. Busy life. Yes. Busy life for sure. And something I'm really working on is carving out more time to rest and carving out more time, you know, practice some self-care for myself, yes. you know, it's so important. And as a teacher of this stuff, it's really important for me to be practicing what I, what I preach. I agree. So I've been, I've been really trying to be mindful about that and carving out time for that. So still working on the time management part, <laughs> <laughs> still working on figuring out how to make time for all of it, but it is really a blessing to have so much to need to be scheduling. You yes, know? yes, absolutely. And you know what? It sounds like uh, all of your creative pursuits kind of like came together uh, in Sunland. Uh, and it does feel that you are at home in that area. And um, my last question to you is actually, what does home mean to you? You did mention that you live in this uh, very, very quaint uh, 1934 craftsman house uh, where things sometimes break down. But what is the heart of your home now that you're surrounded with nature you have all this wonderful creative pursuits how would you describe the meaning of home in your life you know I really think home needs to be your sanctuary Mm -hmm. it needs to be the place that you come to and where you feel like you can exhale and where you feel like you're safe you're comfortable I'm a Taurus and Tauruses love like comfort and luxury, not luxury necessarily. I mean, yes, luxury in terms of like fancy stuff, but like for me, it, the way it manifests is more like, I want the most comfortable pillows. I want the snuggliest blanket. I want the yummiest scented candles. And so my house is filled with <laughs> comfortable pillows, soft blankets, scented candles and plants. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> uh, and animals. Yes. Those things to me like, feeling comfortable, feeling snuggly, feeling warm, feeling really like nutritive, feeling like the home feels nutritive, like 
there's soft lighting and there's tons of green plants everywhere and there's an animal to greet you no matter what corner you turn. Um, that's what home is to me. It it feels like a, a place really where you can you can be soft, mm-hmm. where you can take off your armor from being out in the world, which, you know, the world we live in is aggressive right now, especially if you live in LA, you know, you're dealing with people who are all very, very stressed. So, you know, that's what home is to me. You know, it's, it's having a space where you can really, where you can really exhale. That's really the, the, the boiled down version of it, where you can take off your armor, where you can be soft, you know, where you can um, just have the space to be. Yes. That's really it. Yes, absolutely. And Lila, thank you so much for this warm and friendly and cozy conversation that we just had. And uh, you really expressed very, very clearly what Sunland is all about, you know, with its uh, picturesque beauty, you know, and this wonderful nature uh, that seems so conducive to your lifestyle. And, uh, you know, that you shared all of your creative curiosity that uh, has taken you along all these different artistic paths that uh, you have been pursuing in your life. And thank you for sharing your love for nature and for animals. So I truly, truly appreciate our wonderful conversation today. Oh, thank you for having me. It was really a delight to talk about. It's really also nice to reflect back on, you know, what this time has been like for me. Sometimes you forget when you're in it, you know, it's really nice to take time to reflect back and to really sit in gratitude for um, all the things you do have, even if you're still striving for more, you know, you can still be grateful for where you are and striving for more. So yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. It was really a, really a delight to be here. Of course, Lila. Uh, We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much for tuning in to Feel and Experience Sunland with my special guest, Lila Bessior. If you enjoy my podcast, In the Mood for California, please sign up for future episodes at your preferred platform and please leave your feedback. I really appreciate your time and support. You can follow me on Instagram at In the Mood for California and check out my website www.inthemoodforcalifornia.com. I'm a realtor with Beverly and Company Luxury Properties, and my license number is 019-78714. Selling and buying homes with soul is not just my real estate strategy. It is an intuitive and holistic approach that embraces your values, aspirations, and conscious intentions. If you want to discover the power of mindfulness in your real estate journey with my compassionate guidance, I'm here for you. During our next adventure, we will get a taste of the historic Helms Olympic Bread Building, known as Helms Bakery in Culver City. Cannot wait to have this experience with you. In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood 